Hi, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Cohen and I'm an Assistant Professor of Communication Studies and today I'm going to be telling you about one of the current research projects that I'm working on um, in the Interaction Lab here. Uh, but first, a little background about me. I'm very broadly interested in teaching about and researching on social media. Uh, and a lot of people when they hear the word social media, they have a very limited view of social media and they think about things like social network sites, Twitter and Facebook and MySpace and Friendster if you like vintage. Um, or they think about things like uh, mobile phones or internet chat rooms, you know, places where people are using different types of media and technology to communicate with somebody else. Um, and I totally agree that all of those things are social media. But my definition is even broader than that because I kind of think that all media is social and I'm also interested in those instances when we use more traditional types of, uh, of mass communication like television, radio, books, things like that to have social experiences when we share media with other people uh, and kind of make social events out of things. So maybe um, think about Super Bowl parties where people all want to watch a game together or maybe you just have ritual co-viewing um, events with uh, your roommate or your significant other because you both like to watch a show together. Um, those are the types of things that I think also fall under this category of um, social media um, and I think are particularly interesting because we know that different things happen um, when people watch the media by themselves but when you have people watching the media with other people it adds this new dynamic that could affect how people receive media messages um, and could affect their overall experience. So um, that's one of my favorite things to do. On that note, um, one of the studies I'm working on right now is a co-viewing study, but it's really about co-viewing and spoilers. So let me give you some background. Um, a spoiler is something that spoils a story. So um, we would consider it a spoiler if um, somebody tells you what's going to happen at the end of a story before you've seen it. So sometimes you might read articles and at the very uh, top they'll have in big bold letters, spoiler alert, which is kind of a warning to say if you don't want to know what's going to happen, don't read the article. This has lots, a lot of spoilers in it. Um, you know, so it, in a nutshell, spoiler something that uh, reveals an ending um, before a person knows what's going to happen at the end. Um, now, interestingly, even though we have things like spoiler spoiler alerts, and it's a pretty negative uh, uh, connotation, right, to spoil something. Um, there was a study that came out by some psychologists that found that uh, when people are spoiled, they actually enjoy stories more. So it kind of flies in the face of, of, of what people normally think, right? So um, what they did, by the way, was they had um, different people come into a laboratory and some of them were um, randomly assigned to um, get a spoiler before they read certain short stories. And by the way, it was all types of short stories. It wasn't just suspense, but there was suspense. Suspense and mystery and comedy, so it wasn't just one type of story. Um, but other people weren't told what was going to happen at the end. Um, and again, conventional wisdom would say that the people who weren't spoiled would actually enjoy it more because they had the surprise ending, right? But that's not what happened. They found across the board, across all these different types of stories, the people who knew what was going to happen at the end actually reported liking it more, enjoying these stories more. And I don't want to get into too many details, but there are a lot of reasons for this. And if you think about it, it makes some sense. Like, why do people watch reruns? There must be something about already knowing what's going to happen. Um, and one reason, for instance, could be that um, when you know what's going to happen, it actually allows you to get a little bit deeper into the story. So you can actually um, pay attention to all of the details and um, process it uh, with a little bit more depth because you already know what's going to happen and you don't have to follow all those little narrative points. So anyway, it's neither here nor there. Um, but we do kind of want to do a follow-up on this study and add a new dimension. This is where the social part comes in. So we're wondering if it matters if the person who gets a spoiler is with under other people or not. And obviously we're doing this because we think there might be something to that. Um, so what we're doing is we're having people come into a lab um, and they bring somebody else with them and they are going to watch a television show that they haven't seen before. Um, some of these people are going to be spoiled and other people aren't going to be spoiled. So essentially you get three different uh, potential situations. You could have a situation where um, neither of the two people watching the program are spoiled where both of the people who are watching the program are spoiled, or we think the most interesting one, is where one of the people is spoiled and the other person's not spoiled. What we think will happen is that those people with a lot of knowledge, the people who get spoiled, who get to watch it with somebody who's not spoiled, will enjoy it the most. So even if spoilers are good, 
um, and, and enhance enjoyment, we think that being around somebody who doesn't know what's going to happen when you're spoiled is actually going to increase that enjoyment even more. We actually got this idea from, um, well, uh, let's see, oh, it's been a couple of years now, but there was um. There is a show on HBO called Game of Thrones that before it was a television show, it was a book. And the television show has been holding very close uh, to the book's narrative. So essentially, if you've read the book, you already know what's going to happen in the television show. You've kind of already been spoiled. But not everybody's read the book. Um, so there was a viral video that went around um, a couple of years ago with a really big, I guess you could twist is the wrong word. Something very surprising happened in the show. And what we saw was people that were taking pictures and, and photographs of their friends who hadn't been spoiled because they got some pleasure out of seeing their friend's reaction to the content that they already knew was coming up. Um, but we also think that, that one of the reasons people who um, have this type of information uh, and, and when they're around people who don't have that information, like it is because it makes them feel a little bit more confident, competent, that, that they're going to like it, um, that they know something um, and, and that they have some sort of like in-depth knowledge that other people don't. So there's sort of a social comparison where I'm, I, you know, I'm a little bit better than you because I know what's going to happen. Um, kind of like a show off type of effect, maybe. We'll see. Um, of course, we think that the opposite could be true for that person who's having to watch with the show off, right? Um, we don't think that people will necessarily enjoy watching a program with somebody who's been spoiled when they don't have the same information. It, it puts them on an unlevel playing field. But the honest truth is uh, we have not finished collecting data yet, so we don't know. It's up in the air right now. Um, but if you're interested in these results, hopefully, um, maybe by the, even by the time that you see this uh, video, you could just slip me an email, look me up online, and I'd be happy to um, share what we find with you. So um, thank you so much. Bye.